You know, the year 2000 was very special. Not just because it marked the beginning of a new millennia, but also because Nokia 3310 got launched that year. For those of you who don't know about Nokia 3310, it was the world's best-selling phone, the most popular and probably the most durable phone the world has ever seen. But 17 years is a long time. A lot of things change. Sid has changed from that to this, and Nokia 3310 from that to this. But is this change for good? Well, I spent a week using Nokia 3310 as my primary device. And here are my thoughts on it. Now this is not going to be like my other reviews. Because this is like no other phone around. Maybe because it's not smart. So instead of going by categories, let me simply start by telling you what all has changed in the 17 years from the last Nokia 3310. To start with, the design has been completely revamped and it looks more bubbly and funky than before. And the keys are good to type on. And instead of the single pin charger, or what was called in India as patli pin wala charger, the phone now supports a more universal micro USB port. The SIM cards too have now been changed and it now accepts micro SIM cards. And you can use two of those, apart from using memory card. And the internal memory of this phone is pretty low. So in order to make it more usable, so that at least you can save your pictures or your songs, you need to have a memory card inserted. And talking about songs, it's not that bad as an MP3 player. And apart from having a headphone jack, which even the iPhones now lack, it has also got Bluetooth. Oh, and this time you also get a camera on the back. And your flashlight is also your torch. So, is it a good phone to buy? Well, it's not a bad feature phone. But if you ask me whether or not it's a good primary phone to buy in 2017, I'd have to say, no freaking way. You know, I was very excited when this device came to me because I thought that I have a laptop, I have an iPad. So many of the things I could do on a smartphone, I could transfer them to those devices and my phone usage would be minimal. But clearly, I underestimated my smartphone usage. This phone does not have Wi-Fi or 4G, so you cannot connect to high-speed internet. It does have support for 2G, GPRS and Edge, but that does not matter because you cannot do anything on this phone. You can't watch videos, there are no applications, and the phone is not even fit for emailing. You know, smartphones have spoiled us, and I think it's for good. Because these days you do not need to rely on your computer to shop online, to check maps, to create and edit documents for emailing, or to click pictures. Which reminds me, the rear camera is clearly inadequate, as you can judge from these samples. And coming to selfies, well, there is no front camera. I cannot pay a shopkeeper using Paytm. I cannot conveniently book an Uber to avoid drunk driving. I can't even use WhatsApp on this phone. I mean, come on, even a thousand rupee phone these days has got support for Facebook and WhatsApp. And that brings us to the pricing. At 3310 rupees, this phone directly is competing with a lot of entry-level smartphones, which can do a lot more than what this phone can achieve. In fact, a phone from LIFE can run Geo SIM cards easily because of the support for Volt E, which this phone cannot. Now I'm not saying I didn't enjoy playing Snake on this phone or relish the long battery life that I so much miss on the modern day smartphones or the swag of restarting a phone by simply ejecting its battery. But then, this phone demands you to sacrifice a lot of things in lieu of that swag. By the way, this phone does have a lot of swag. Take it to a party and this is likely to get you more eyeballs than an iPhone would. But then, you need to look like someone who can have a better phone. Not this guy. And one more thing I need to address is a lot of people saying that it's a good phone for their grandparents. Well, maybe it is, but why would you spend this much money when you can get a better feature phone under 3310 rupees? Secondly, if they are willing to try, I'd recommend that you get them a hang of using touch phones. They are in fact easier to use than feature phones. Lastly, even if this phone was durable as the original Nokia 3310, it was as durable as that, I might have recommended it to you. But it isn't. So at least for me, and I assume for most of you, this is a very good phone for nostalgia, for swag, for reliving your youth or childhood. For maybe it's a decent spare phone as well. But when it comes to real world application, you would need something. Something a bit more smarter.
And that sums up my review of the Nokia 3310 as a primary device. But I need to know what you think of this phone. So whatever you think, post them in the comment box below after you have liked this video and shared it with your friends. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you can come back and see more of me. By the way, the next Bhaiyaji video is going to be of OnePlus 5. So be sure you stay, stay subscribed to stay tuned. My name is Sid. Come back and see more of me. Ciao.